What's up guys, David Land here coming to you once again in Project Cars. This time I have decided we are going to go back in time, get in the old DeLorean and go back to the 1960s when uh, sex was safe and racing was dangerous as they used to say. Uh, we are racing classic 60s F1 cars at the Rouen Les Essars. I think I pronounced that correctly, circuit in France. This hosted the uh, French Grand Prix uh, in the 60s, I think in the 70s as well. I think they did a one-off in the 70s. Uh, this circuit uh, ended up closing in 1994, uh, but it was made up of public roads, uh, very similar to the uh, Grand Prix circuits of the day. Uh, it was actually uh, unique for a circuit to be built as a permanent circuit. Uh, back in the 60s in F1. Uh, tracks like Spa, uh, tracks like Le Mans, um, all made up of public roads rather than uh, purpose-built circuits. Uh, so this is one of them, uh, made up of highways out in France somewhere. I'm not really sure of the whole history of the circuit, but as you can see, there are hay bales that line the circuit because circuit safety. Uh, we are driving the Lotus 49C, and as you can see, not very well. Oh no, I'm not driving the Lotus 49C, I'm driving the Lotus 49. The cars with the wings are the Lotus 49C, which we will be racing against. Now, I had originally planned for this video to be with the 49C, the car with the wings. But when I did the qualifying session with that car, I was six seconds a lap faster than the AI qualifying on the pole. So I said, uh, that's probably not going to make a very interesting video if I absolutely machine gun the AI with a car with wings. So I decided to take on the base 49, the car that Jim Clark and Graham Hill made so famous uh, in Formula One. And uh, well, we're gonna try to take on the cars with wings without wings. Is it gonna go well? You'll just have to wait and find out. A 12-lap race here at Rouen, Les Essars. Let's get it started. All right, ready to go for the French Grand Prix at Rouen. We are in the Lotus 49. We've got a couple of them ahead of us. The 49C is pretty much locked out the first couple rows of the grid. And that was a fantastic start. We're actually gonna be up a couple of positions here. Gotta make sure we don't get clipped, though but that was about as good of a standing start as you're ever gonna make right there. And it looks like a lot of cars are off further back in the pack. These first couple corners very, very difficult. The curbs are very high and very nasty here at Rouen, especially with these fairly thin 60s F1 tires. You get on those things and you're gonna spin. So we're just going to be real careful getting into the hairpin here for the first time. Like I said in the intro, as to the fact that this track is public roads, you actually can drive this circuit in real life. I think most of it exists, if not all of it. Obviously not the pits anymore, I believe they got rid of those, but outside of that, you can drive Rouen Les Essars as much as you like in real life. Just don't get caught for speeding if you're ever in France. So here we go to the inside of the car that's kind of painted like a BRM. There's a couple of McLaren painted-ish cars and a couple, I don't even think there are any red cars. I think they wanted to stay away from that association. As you can just see, the green car just ahead of me got up on the curbs there and almost spun the car. You had to be so careful not to run into the back of him. And that corner is very difficult. As you can see, just I did set the car up a little bit. I definitely I loosened up the springs and softened up the uh, roll bars and whatnot. And I also geared the car for much faster speeds. As you can see, they're probably hitting the rev limiter right there as we go around another one of the BRMs. And now we have to really get into the south hairpin with a lot of caution. We're actually catching up to the 49Cs with the wings. So I'm kind of happy about that. Now will I be able to pass them is another question because of the fact that they're going to be so fast through the corners. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to match an aerodynamically aided car through the corners. And then through turn one, this is seems like a very fast corner and it actually is a very fast corner as I got on the curb and I really need to not do that. 
but in the 49, without the wings, it these corners are so treacherous. You have to use so much care getting through there. As you saw, my car kind of got sideways, and then the car behind me also got sideways and into the hairpin. This is such a cool corner because you go t literally 25 miles an hour as we've got a car. Made a little bit of contact with us there, the BRM just behind us. If I recognize the livery, or at least what it's trying to be, I'll try to call it out. I know there's a couple cars that are painted like the Matras and the McLarens. But like I said, no Ferraris, no red cars. Unless you're counting the John Player Special uh, liveried uh, 49Cs. But those are, you know, specifically Lotuses. Get up into third gear here, just try to be a little bit cautious, especially in this corner. You can see those hay bales on the outside, very, very treacherous. You don't want to get out into those, and you can see there's cars spinning in the background. There was smoke because of losing it over there. Is The other thing is, of course, about that last corner is that the curbs go away for just a split second, so you can catch one curb, get on flat ground and then catch another one and spin your car out. But there are all the 49Cs you can see on the mini-map all grouped together. And then we're in this second group. Well, I'm the leader in class, I suppose, but this isn't really a multi-class race. So we're going to have to see if we're going to be able to catch these guys or if we're going to get lucky with them coming into the pits. I don't even think I've mentioned that this is a 12-lap race yet. It's a 12-lap race. Uh, because the lap times are about two minutes, so I figure 24 minutes of entertainment. That's good. So seven seconds is the gap. Kind of weird that I have a radio communication in a 60s F1 car. That technology really wouldn't be modernized until the 70s. But oh well. Historical accuracy. Hashtag FTW. Well, we're at least pulling away from the BRM just behind us, but I don't know if we're going to be able to catch this group of 49Cs without some help of lap traffic, or maybe some silliness on their part. A lot of uh, a lot of the AI crash right over here. They go up on that hill, and then they uh, they have to retire their cars because they can't get they can't get off of the hill. It's kind of funny when it happens. It's definitely one of the more interesting and can benefit you project cars glitches, if that makes sense. This is a corner that's really deceptively difficult, this one right here. It's deceptively slow. Oh, as you can see, I get up on the curbs there, and that's not what we want to do. The BRM's going to pull up just a little bit closer to me there. And I'm just driving like a sissy right now, because I can hear the BRM behind me. I was worried about screwing up there. I felt like I was going to screw up, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to bail out of it. Probably a mistake. Then up into fifth gear. The car actually can slide through this sweeping carousel-like corner onto the, the highway here. And I believe this is actually like an, an interstate highway in, uh, in France, this little part of the track right here. I looked up Rouen on uh, Google Maps one day. And I believe when I saw the modern circuit it was like a, an interstate highway system. You noticed that you could probably notice anyway that that was like three or four lanes wide. I wonder how many people drive on these roads every day and don't know the history, don't know what they're driving on. I'm getting yelled at by my race engineer because apparently I'm not going fast enough, despite the fact that I'm the fastest. Uh, type of my car on the track as we go off and like I said those first two corners are pretty treacherous now we've got now we've got a reason to go we gotta go catch that BRM that's annoying and then there's a couple more cars behind me don't really want to deal with them oh whoa, whoa, whoa. that is we almost killed like five spectators right there you can just see that everybody is on the inside of that track, there's not really a lot of debris fencing there. Or anything that's going to keep a Lotus 49 from mowing down several innocent people. I do appreciate that Slightly Mad Studios did not modernize this track at all. 
they kept it period correct. And uh, that definitely adds to the, the feeling of it. Feels like you're racing in a Grand Prix car in the 1960s. You can see just like spectator stands, there's people just standing behind highway barricades and then you've got like literal coyote fencing right here. That's gonna keep out a rabbit. That's not even gonna keep out a keep out anything but, but the wildlife I would guess. But now we can't now we're stuck behind the BRM and I'm nowhere close right now. So I really need to hook up a few corners here. We're gonna get in the hairpin, the second hairpin here. Not even use first gear. Feels like I get better traction in second gear. And up into third. He's pulling me just a little bit. Again, I set my gearing up for uh, top speed, not really acceleration. May have been a mistake in hindsight, but hindsight is always 2020. What kind of a lap time we're going to do here? Probably another 208. Two, oh, yeah, 208. So if we don't screw up, we can probably do better than the 206 we've already run. So let's try to do that, shall we? So as we found out last lap, this is the third gear corner. Can't take it in fourth, and we got through there much better this time. And really starting to close in here on the BRM. Do not hit that curb on the outside. I was so close to, to nailing that curb and really causing myself some headaches. And as you can see, my controller doesn't have the steering input that a wheel would have, unfortunately. So the hairpin, I'm always going to lose time in there just because I can't crank the wheel the way you'd want to. You can see just that BRM getting right out next to the curbs. We run the curb. Yeah, stay off of that, David. So we get the wheel locked up there. Tires aren't going to wear that much throughout the course of the race. Again, they're kind of these old rock-hard 1960s tires. Oh, oh. I followed him out into it. I should not have done that. I followed him out because I was like, oh, he looks like he's going really fast through the corner. And then uh, it put me out on the curb. So, I mean, and that corner is so in important because it leads you onto this run onto the back straightaway. And you can just see how much time, I mean, that the BRM ahead is just disappearing off into the distance. 173 miles an hour. So we really locked up the brakes there a little bit. Maybe got in a little too hot there. But I feel like I actually maybe made up some time there. We'll have to see when we get to turn one. See if I can get through the final corner decently. Which I would describe as decent. I wouldn't describe it as the greatest corner that has ever been taken in the history of man. But I think we're going to do a decent lap time here. Yeah, we've got a second off of our fairly poor lap times we've been doing. Down to third. It was decent through there. Now, if I can stay to the inside, I think I can make up some time. Because for whatever, for whatever reason, the AI like to run a high line through that last corner that you just saw. Right out wide next to the curb for the hairpin. Oops, probably slowed down a little too much there. Alright, that was not the best line to take. And you can see the acceleration from the AI that's got the acceleration gearing. I'm not really able to make up too much time through these. Oh boy. Wow. Wow, that was a crash that was not a crash, folks. I'm not sure how I saved that. Oh, and he's crashed. He crashed. I knew that was going to happen. I just got gifted a position. Wow. So, I'm kind of glad in hindsight that I made the mistake that I did because it would have been right behind him when he was careening across the track. Woo-wee! Okay. That was a thing that happened. That was scary. And I'm glad I don't have to see again. 
to get down to second gear, kind of grind a gear there a little bit on the throttle. Now we've got looks like an actually Lotus liveried 49 behind us. So I did not get through the final corner very well. It looks like it's going to be all right at least by the time we get into turn one. So let's just run a clean lap and see what kind of a lap time we can do here. So we're already on lap seven. So we've got five laps to go. Just be nice and smooth. It's amazing. This is just an advice for a racing game, racing games in general. It's amazing when you just focus on your corners. Ooh, maybe not focus on the gear shifts, but uh, focus on the corners and just run what you believe is a clean line. And you, you'd be amazed how much faster you end up going. That was not a clean line out of the hairpin, just an FYI. And we've actually got some competition here. As you can see, we are getting chased down mightily, mighty fast. Oh, do not hit that curb. Okay, we may have to be defensive, and he's going to go down to the inside. Well, I tried to break as late as I could, but... Oh, for the love of God. Okay. We've lost a lot, another position. Now here comes the BRM, which crashed in the last lap and is now caught me back up. So we need to hustle here. Hustle, 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 hustle. Because I want the draft of the Lotus just ahead of me. So I can get him going down to the hairpin. I think we're going to be able to do it fairly easily, actually. I think we got a big run coming out of this corner. He's up on the curb and getting loose, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to actually catch him before the end of the straightaway. I almost was a daredevil there and went for 180 miles an hour, but then I said, I'd like to make the corner please. Oh boy, as I don't barely make the exit of the corner. I also hit the rev limiter, which is also wonderful to do. It's amazing, he just ran the curve, and he didn't spin out. But uh, if I had done the same thing, I would be uh, looking like a fidget spinner. So, reference. You like a reference to fidget spinners, which is going to completely date this video in a video about a 60s F1 car? On a 60s track, and I'm talking about fidget spinners. Wonderful content. Here we go, okay. We're going to get in behind the Lotus here. It's actually not the properly Lotus liveried 49, but it doesn't matter. We're going to get to the inside, get on the curb just well. We're getting on the grass a little bit. But we made the pass. Nice clean pass. And we're actually four tenths faster than our fastest lap. So that's what we need to be doing right now. And now just time to be smooth. Unlike the last time I said, just be smooth. Right down. That corner is such a bugaboo, but we got through it. And now out onto the back straightaway. After I take it really easy. As he... Wow, that Lotus back there just drifted the final corner. Or not the final corner, but the corner we were just previously in. Impressive driving. Now we are 1.3 seconds ahead of our best lap. That's good. That's always a good thing. The 49 C's are gone. So it looks like we may be 7th place. Or I should say 7th place, place may be our lot in life. Heck, that's not even points in old F1. I think uh, in the 60s they only paid points to the first six finishers. So we're not even in points at the moment. That's good. Well, we just turned to 105 or 205. And now we can start trying to string some, together some laps. In fact, the back of the field looks like they're in, or the front of the field looks like they're in the back of the field at this point. So they're in lap traffic. So you kind of hope 
maybe a couple of them get caught out, maybe crash. So we can gain a few more positions. We got a second gear, first gear. Right down next to the curb, on the curb. Accelerate out of the corner. And now we're four tenths behind our best lap. So exactly as far behind as we were ahead the last lap. So I guess we're average right now. It's an average lap. We just got to keep that other Lotus behind us. Oh, on the curb, stop that, David. I'm playing with fire doing that every lap. Here we go. I'd like to nail that inside curb, but I just don't trust it. So I'm not going to do it. It looks like we got a good gap anyway. Shift up early in the fifth to kind of get, keep the car stabilized through this nice sweeping corner. Still half a second behind our best lap. Not a real surprise. It means we're going to be in for a 206 lap time. Not too bad though. It would have qualified much better on the grid than I did. In fact, I think it would have qualified with the 49 C's to do uh, a 205. Wish I would have done that in qualifying. A little, a little bit of understeer, out on the curb. And I completely blew the final corner of this lap, which is gonna kill my lap time, I think. Yep, six, seven, eight, nope. Almost to an eight, not quite to an eight. But we do have, once again, Lotus problems behind us. Oh, 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 no. Why do you look in your mirrors? Why do you look in your mirrors, David? Why do you do that? Why do you do that to yourself? Well, at least we, looks like we're gonna be able to power through here. Just gotta defend. Oh, that's too much throttle. Two seconds slower than our best time, and there is now a 49C behind it. Oh, boy. All right, bro. Why you drift? Ah, God almighty. Well, this is not good. Now falling to 10th, and there's a 49C in that group. It's a McLaren liveried, orange and green, and it is coming through the field. But as you saw, tire smoke on tire smoke from a lot of those guys. Gotta make sure nobody's crashing up here. Nobody is. Okay, on the throttle, we need to get back up there. We've got two laps to go. Or at least two laps to do it. So I think we should be able to pass this car fairly easily. Well, depending on if he's gonna block, which he is. Well, now he's going out on the ground. Well, you got karma for that one, dude. You're weaving in the middle of a carousel. What do you expect to happen? Okay, so we got the Lotus and the McLaren up here. BRM behind me, but I'm not too worried about that car. I'm worried about the McLaren getting around the Lotus, though. If that happens, we're kind of in trouble. Because we're not getting around that 49C without some help with traffic. So I think we can take 7th back. You can see I slid the car just a little bit through turn 1. Really braked late into the second corner. I'm surprised I pulled that off. And now the 49C is all over the back of that poor 49 just ahead. You gotta go for it here. And he, wow, he got pushed wide. So the McLaren got pushed wide. By the Lotus. And that's gonna keep this competitive, at least for the moment. Get the car down into that corner. And now up to the slow one where I always hit the curbs. 
And the McLaren's to the inside. Did he make the pass? Yes, he did. Darn. Okay, but I can get a draft here. If I'm brave, he's crashed. The Lotus has crashed. So now we've got to race the 49C here. And the one thing, the one advantage you can have with not having wings is the fact that you have less drag, therefore more straightaway speed. So, we've got a big long straightaway here, and we are absolutely flying. There's 180. And absolutely trying to outbreak a, oh boy. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> Into the hay bales. Thankfully it stopped us, but the McLaren got away. Some, surprisingly, somehow the car is not damaged. It feels okay, I should say. Well, thank, thank you for hay bales, I guess. We didn't manage to crash, so final lap. We've got to chase down this McLaren. Can we do it? Got to hit these corners where they, he's going to have downforce on me as best as we can. Got a little bit of a slide going there, but not too bad. That's how you drive these classic F1 cars fast, is slides. So here we go. Try to get that thing turned. A little too much of a slide there. Ah, I'm just overdriving the car now. Oh boy, and I've been crashed. Well, I was crashed, but my car is still running. I don't know how and I don't know why, but I'm not going to complain about it. There were parts littering the road. But for whatever reason, we're still going. So we're going to finish it. The only thing I can hope for now is these cars ahead of me crash. And it looks like they may have. Nope, okay. So now it's up to a draft. We're still a position ahead of where we qualified, so that's a good thing. Uh-oh. Nope. Yeah, the car's definitely damaged. That's for sure. That's for certain sure. So, well, we're coming down the back straightaway. We'll look at the trees. Hello, trees. Oh, boy. Oh, now we've got a mechanical fault, but it's the last lap of the race, so... Screw it. We're going to drive this thing, three wheels and all, to the finish. We've got no more cars behind us, so it's possible that we are the last car running in the race. That wouldn't surprise me all that much. But we'll coast it down the main straightaway for the final time. And that was Classic F1 at Rouen. Oh boy, well we're going to crash before we get to the finish line. Just slowly drive down the straightaway. There's the checkered flag. And we've done it. Wow. That was a thing. That was interesting. So, that was F1 at Rouen. Let's see uh, exactly what happened, how it all shook out. Uh, Sebastian in the uh, 49C, no surprise. In fact, uh, the 49Cs were the first six finishers in the race uh, in fact we would have probably taken uh, the fifth position or the sixth position if we had been able to stay ahead of Daniele uh, in the final of the 49 C's that were up at the front Fabrizia uh, was the fastest of the uh, type 49's just the base model and there was only one car out of the race at the end of the at the end of the race and it was indeed a 49 C so that's good, and as you can see, it looks like it only made one lap. Uh, no, it actually crashed on the last lap? Really? Oh, wow. Crashed on the last lap for that 49C. So that is uh, Project Cars uh, Vintage Formula One at Rouen. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more Project Cars, and we'll see you in the next video.